take a deep cleansing breath. And we're gonna detox the spirit. <laughs> okay, blood flow. Mm -hmm. Rosy cheeks, <laughs> rosy cheeks. How am I? You're beautiful, as usual. All right, let's do this. Yeah, I feel pretty good about it. All right, guys. I feel manly. Let's All right, go. welcome back, everybody. Today, what we are discussing, actually, we should probably talk about who we are. I, I always forget to say my name. My name is Horatio Cornelius Ur Jackson. Horatio. I'm joined here by J3. <laughs> Welcome back, guys. Take two. Take two. <laughs> Welcome back, guys. I am Jason Salyer, and this is Alan Kay, and today we're going to talk about building ourselves a insulatory mattress out of natural materials if you should find yourself having to sleep on the ground. Is that a word, insulatory? It has to be a word. Probably is. I just made it up. I like if it. I say it, it, it right. is a word. I'll look it up later. <laughs> Here we have J3 in his native <laughs> habitat. <laughs> Notice the squirrel-like personality. <laughs> During mating season, they build a nest out of white pine. <laughs> Notice the way he covers and, and conceals the spore so that the chupacabra cannot track him. Notice also that he did not put his knife down, he put it back in his pocket so he doesn't lose it. An often overlooked tactic. <laughs> All right, so as, I, as I'm working and getting some, generating some body heat, one would think that that's a good thing, but what can happen is I start to sweat. And if I start to sweat, they, the layers of my clothing might get a little bit damp. And as anyone would tell you, if you sleep out here tonight and you're even a tiny bit damp, a little breeze comes through, you will freeze your butt off. So it's a really, really good idea as you start to warm up, start shedding layers before that sweat starts to happen. So now we're going to take these pieces that are the body length pieces and we're going to lay them on the ground. You know, four inches apart, three inches, something like that. We just want to kind of spread it out more or less uh, body width. That one's a little lean in the middle, so I'm gonna use this on the edge. Yeah. Something like that will work. Uh, I'm cutting these to a, the approximate body width of me and Alan here. So we can lay our 
our torso on top of this and not be touching any part of the actual ground. We'll all be raised up off of the ground because this is going to be as wide as I am essentially. This can all be done without any tools whatsoever, but then you're forced to basically pick up dead stuff up off the ground, break things with your hands, which works, but it's never going to be quite as good or as efficient as, as having a tool. Just a pocket knife is something that could be um, basically priceless in a survival situation. Having a multi-tool like this with a saw on it, some pliers and, and whatnot, is just something that's so easy to carry. Why not? right? Why not have it? I find it outrageous that grown men don't carry a knife with them at all times. I know several people that don't have a knife on them, don't have it in their pockets, and it, I just can't, I just don't get it. I can't, can't understand it. So what we're going to do now is we're going to kind of spread these these cross pieces out, you know, about four inches or so. And what that's going to do is it's going to displace the weight of our body. And you can already see that we have a what I like to call a limit of advance. There is there is only so far that this material can collapse now, even before we add any of the more insulating layers to this. If I place my hands on this, you can see that, that I can't touch the earth. So no matter what, overnight, see, if we just do a bed out of leaves, eventually they will compress under your body weight and you go back to conductivity. And we're trying to avoid conduction because the earth will literally suck the life out of you. So the magic words to insulation are dead air space. And we're going to take some of these leaves, even though they are moist, and we're going to kind of shake them down into this framework that we have. And then because they will, they will help slow down airflow and all of that. And then lastly, we'll have the drier things that'll be in contact with our clothing and our body. Another uh, reason that we always want to end going widthwise instead of lengthwise is if you roll over these sticks, if, if, we, if we have our last course running lengthwise of our body, when we roll, they tend to just displace to the outside and they make a chasm in there. So I always like my last course to run side to side instead of the length of the body. So now you see I have all 250 pounds of my body weight bearing down on this structure, kind of in the front lean and rest position, like a push up position, and it, it will not compress. So I can lay on this thing for a long time and it's not going to collapse down uh, another feature to this type of a framework is water can actually run under you like if i build this thing up six seven eight inches like i say it's all situationally dependent but water will flow under me and that's important to me in the mountains because there is no level ground here unless you create it so it's often the case that when rains come and things like that that water will trickle down the slope and this allows water to pass under you while keeping your bedding and your clothing dry. So our next course of action uh, might be kind of counterintuitive here, but we are going to use these leaves even though they are moist. And we're going to shake those down into this structure that we built because they, they will insulate to some degree and they're not going to be what uh, is finally in contact with our body. We're going to be using... Uh, this this dryer material here and if there are grasses I like to always finish with grass because it's just uh, really dry really comfortable and the taller grasses are the straws are hollow so it, that's more dead air space you know dead air is the magic words when it comes to shelter always create dead air space have some leaves in here and I just kind of like to take my hands and shake it down to where I'm filling in those spots between the, the sticks that we put off and you can still 
when I put my body weight on it, I can still feel those limbs, but they're much more comfortable than they were before to the body. And that's another facet of this. It's not all about survival. It's about being able to sleep. Um, sleep is something that we don't talk about enough. You know, if you're not sleeping well, you're not rested, you're not going to make good decisions. And your brain is your number one survival tool. So you, you do need to be rested. You do need to sleep. Uh, now that we have our leaves down, we're going to start with some of pieces like this, a little more whippy. And if they have an edge on them like that, what I like to do is just kind of tuck that in. And we do various angles and no, no discernible pattern at all. Just it's mainly intuitive and we want to crisscross them because this will further displace our body weight and add those uh, layers of comfort. But we do want it to be even, evenly dispersed. You know, I don't want to put them all facing the same way. And I just keep threading them in, putting the, the cut in down and toward the bottom so that uh, my body doesn't have to interact with that. And I like to just use them at various angles. There's really no rhyme or reason to it. But all of this does have a cumulative effect. And once you, once you get enough of this bedding down, uh, you know, like I tell people, a shelter without a mattress is no shelter at all. Uh, a shelter is going to protect us from all of the things that will kill us. You know, convection, the movement of air, conduction, touching something, um, radiation, the fact that our body radiates heat. So a good shelter will do all of those. But ultimately, the mattress is arguably one of the most important parts of it. For instance, if I'm properly clothed and I lay on top of one of these, I've already increased my survivability exponentially. In addition, I could do a fire or reflecting wall to the side. If I had a Mylar blanket in my pocket, I could erect that to reflect the heat. So there's all types of ways that you can take this principle and, uh, and just keep adding layers and degrees of comfort and warmth to it. You could even do this first and then build your lean-to, build your shelter around your mattress so that you don't unnecessarily make the shelter larger than it has to be. Usually when we say the word shelter, the first thing that comes to your mind is, a structure, a house, a teepee, an igloo. And in survival situations, we need to think of the shelter uh, more like a sleeping bag than a house. So it needs to be smaller for several reasons. One, you're, uh, you're using less energy and less materials. And you're also burning less time. Time is a resource. But I've slept on these, you know, during my time in Vancouver Island, uh, my mattress was essential to my survival there. You know, without having a proper mattress like this, I would have frozen, no question about it. I've built basically this same bed in a much, much different climate than this in a swamp. And by using these same principles, you can elevate yourself up, self up off of the wet ground. And sleeping in a mud puddle well, at least for me, is not really an option. I wouldn't be doing much sleeping if I was laying in a mud puddle. So by doing this and just keep, you can continuously add, you didn't have to stop at those two layers, how we laid those, those um, one rung going one way and then perpendicular to it. We, we basically stopped at two of the heavier logs. We could do that infinite amount basically and get ourselves feet above the ground by doing exactly that same thing and get yourself up off the wet ground. You know, one thing that's really important is uh, you have to eat the cow one bite at a time. You know, you're not going to have the end-all, be-all shelter or mattress on day one. It's important to acknowledge the fact that we always want to constantly improve our position. Your goal that first night is just don't die. That's really important. Then after that, we can continue adding, and this thing can be up here and be just as cush as we have the time and resources to... Uh, make the best situation for ourselves that we can. And it has a huge psychological impact. You know, even if you don't have food, if you're able to do something to take some type of action that uh, enhances your circumstances, it helps to keep everybody's morale up. You know, you're doing something proactive to uh, make your life better. Instead of falling into a victim mentality of, oh, poor me, I'm gonna die. You know, if you, if you start thinking that way, you probably will. And using your your time and energy wisely too. So every time you go out on to do whatever it is, 
to explore, to check out a different spot, forage, fish, whatever it may be, you come back with more material to add to the bedding as yeah. opposed to making a separate trip just for that one purpose. That's a really important facet to consider is wasted energy. You know, we, we want economy of motion. As we walk through the woods, we're thinking ahead of fire. Is that tender that I could collect for a fire later? Is that rock good for a bearing block for a friction fire? Oh, look, here's an edible plant. Uh, there's a burrow I might want to put a trap next to. You know, everything, you got to be multitasking out here because nothing is quick or ready-made. And time is one of our greatest resources. And movement uses calories and calories are precious. So you got to get the most bang for your buck. Laying on this, I am inches off of the ground. So I, we can only compress these branches and these, these pine boughs so much until we get down to where those bigger branches are. And even then, once we get to those bigger branches, you're not laying on the ground anymore because we can't compress that. So this is far, far more comfortable and dramatically warmer than if I was laying on that that is could you feel the difference uh, already <laughs> immediately even through my clothing my three or four layers that i'm wearing i can feel the cold just creeping into my hip my shoulder into my side and if i lay on my back it's going to be even even more exaggerated then your kidneys get cold yeah and once that happens once the once your guts get cold you are going to freeze and it's going to take so long to warm that back up you can warm it up by having external heat. You can exercise. You could do all of that, assuming you're not injured. But if you could save yourself from losing that temperature in the first place by having yourself an insulatory mattress like this, oh, it's so much better. And you could actually get some sleep. In a in an urban situation, you could do the same type of thing, but you might use things uh, available to you in a city like cardboard, newspapers, pallets, plastic sheeting as a vapor barrier. If if you look at homeless camps, they usually do have something between them and the ground. It's it's the it's not rocket science. It's just the concept of insulation, right? That's right. Trapping the dead airspace. None mm -hmm. of it's you know, none of it's brain surgery. How's that uh, as far as comfort? Pretty good. I mean, especially with the multiple layers of clothing that I'm wearing. I mean, you can, I don't feel anything stabbing me, jabbing me. I could easily fall asleep on this, no problem. I'd probably turn around so my head's not going downhill a little bit. But, you know, despite all that, it's still so much more comfortable than nothing else. Yeah, if you're asleep with your head downhill, you typically wake up with a headache. Yeah. Wake up, slacker. Back to work. <laughs> so nice. I've had some of my best sleeps in the woods on the cold days when you're in the sunshine. You know, you find that warm spot in the woods. Mm -hmm. When the sun's coming in, you can feel the warmth hitting you and the laying down the leaves. That's a, that's a good nap. All right, so here it is, finished product. Um, last night it was in the low 20s with snow and other types of precipitation and a significant wind speed. And I would not have any hesitation about sleeping on this. In fact, when I put my hand here and put some body weight on it and put my hand on the ground, it is instantly noticeably different. My hand that is on the ground is much colder uh, in terms of felt cold than what I experienced with my hand on the mattress. So that's the basic concept of it. You know, obviously uh, the, the situation in which you find yourself and the available materials at hand will dictate how you build it and what you use to build it. But this is just the, the concept. So I hope you found some value in that. Uh, statistically speaking, exposure to the elements is one of the things that will kill you first. And we see every year there's some homeless person that dies uh, because of hypothermia and that's unfortunate. So uh, put this in your toolbox, in your mental toolbox, and with this skill, even without tools, uh, you can survive as long as you don't quit, you know, don't give up. So thanks for watching and we'll see you next time.